Hi everyone. I hope you all are doing great. Welcome to another session of Expert Roundup. And today we have very special guest, Emmy. So there are cool things about Emmy, like she's uh, managing Amazon's brands. She helped brands to scale their businesses. She is co-founder and CEO of Amazing at Home. The names, the names uh, is amazing as well. So let's hear for Amy what she has to say. Uh, hi, Amy. How are you? Hello, I'm very Hello. good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so you have a very cool branding behind you. Amazing at home, it says everything. You are working from home and like, and your brand says like your company name is Amazing at Home as well. So Emmy, let's uh, tell about yourself, what you do and how you help Amazon seller for how long you are into this Amazon business. And like you people are running a woman only community as well in which you support uh, female Amazon sellers and you help them. Uh, like to grow and scale. So let's hear it from you, how you people are managing all this thing. <laughs> well, um, I started selling on Amazon in 2007 as a hobby. I used to flip my textbooks when I was in college. Um, and, you know, I've just done it as a hobby um, ever since then until 2017. Uh, I had an idea for a product and I invented a product um, and, you know, got started on my private label journey. So um, during that time, I really, you know, I have a background in cybersecurity and um, in computing and that kind of stuff. And so I really, I, I really enjoy figuring things out. And so I learned a lot about SEO. I learned a lot about um, copywriting and I started copywriting part time uh, on places like Fiverr and also sharing my story in my Facebook group. Um, I figured other people had ideas for products, too, and maybe they might need help developing their product and they might be on the same journey. So I just would share and um, and then also started copywriting listings because I figured out that if I if if I put the right SEO on a listing, the right keywords, I could turn any product around. So even a product that wasn't selling, I could find a new keyword for it or find a new way to brand it. And I started helping people sell out of saturated products and they started asking to consult with me. And I very quickly helped them grow and scale their brands and I became a business consultant out of nowhere. I never expected to be a business consultant. I thought I was just starting a private label brand <laughs> and inventing a product and um, ended up becoming, you know, now we were just voted in the last seller poll as the top three consultant and private label course creator in the world. So that was pretty awesome. Um, and, you know, our we do have a course as well. Uh, but our course focuses not just on Amazon. We help people build brands. We help them develop products. We help them understand how to source, how to negotiate, how to uh, you know prototype everything from concept all the way to launching their products on Amazon. So anyway, um, that is kind of the story. So I have you know my private label brands as well as uh, being a consultant and helping people grow and create brands on Amazon and beyond. Oh my God, uh, that's an impressive story, by the way. So how you come up with the name Amazing at Home and what's the purpose of having this name, especially? <laughs> you know, it's really, really funny, Atif. I, um, I, when I started uh, consulting, like I was on Fiverr doing listing optimizations and I, had all these people asking to consult with me because I was turning around their products. Right. And I was like, okay, I was growing off of Fiverr very quickly, but I didn't have a website or anything. And I needed that, right? Like to be legitimate, you really need a website. You really need a, a web presence. And so I had this domain name that I bought originally amazing at home. I bought it to actually do a vlog on YouTube featuring people at home. <laughs> <laughs> like doing cool things at home. And at the time I hadn't done anything with it yet. And I was like, okay, I need this website because I'm like, just, this is taking off overnight. And so I ended up using the domain name and I built my website over the weekend. And, <laughs> and now it's become like 
our old logo is so terrible. And this one was designed by a company that designs for movies. I mean, it, we've really evolved over the years, but um, but yeah, it literally was just a domain name that I owned. I have a little bit of a domain name collection problem. <laughs> and I was like, well, I guess I'll just use it to create this website. And then I couldn't get out of it because the brand grew so quickly that I was like, I guess we're amazing at home. <laughs> This is this is amazing. This is literally that's a hilarious story, by the way, for the name especially. So it's it's really hard to find a good name, and like sometime out of a blue moon, you find something, and you were like, okay, this could be my brand name, and this is the same thing with you, like amazing at home. And actually, you people are amazing. The things that you people do, the the things you people help to scale any Amazon brand to seven figure, eight figure, nine figure, that's an amazing thing. And this is why people know you. So your name says everything amazing at home and you guys work from home right yep. you haven't had any of this right <laughs> this, so is, this is my home <laughs> sorry so for how long you people have been working and managing everything from home so how is so, pandemic i left yeah. my i left my high paying um job as a cyber security operations manager um into october of 2018 and we were already running our private label brands full time out of our home. My husband, we brought him home from work first. Um, he was a police officer and then a teacher. Um, we brought him home from work first. And then I stayed in my job. And uh, in October of 2018, I did that. So since about 2017, we've been running our companies out of our home. Oh my God. So that, that's you and your husband. You both work uh, parallel to each other and you both build this company and your private label brands. This is an amazing thing. And like your uh, husband has a great job, like working as a police officer, working as a teacher, and you are a cybersecurity consultant, which means like this, that's a high paying job in US for sure. Yeah. But anywhere, actually. So, so what is what is this one thing that uh, grabbed you and your husband? from leaving your high paying jobs and starting with Amazon business and like, what's, what's the point? Uh, so what's one thought that keep you away from your jobs and starting with Amazon business because Amazon itself is a hustle, right? Once you start, you need to put a whole lot of time, energy, it do require capital as well and a whole lot of effort. You need to be very much inclined towards your business because that's something relatively different than what we people do, like normal jobs and all. Yes. Well, thank you for mentioning, first of all, that it is a hustle and it's not it's not just like, oh, we're going to be on the beach with our laptop tomorrow with our Lamborghini. Right. <laughs> like, it does take time to grow a, a brand and a business. Um, the reason that we took this leap is because um, I like I said, I invented a product and we were building a, a real brand and we knew that we needed to put the time and effort into it. Amazon is not a side hustle. It is a full time, you know, and we don't just sell on Amazon. We sell on Walmart, we sell in retail. So we're building a brand. Yes, Amazon is a sales channel and a very strong sales channel at that. But uh, for us, it really, it was about the mindset. It was about, you know, we need to be focused on this and really grow it, grow it full time. So, um, and, it's not easy for everyone to leave their job in the beginning, especially since, you know, private label uh, takes a lot of upfront investment because it's really a scale game. You have to have enough products before you can even start taking profit out of your business. Right. Um, so I'm in the beginning, that's why um, I kept my job and my husband came home. And then, you know, after we were very profitable with both of our companies, we brought me home and just did it full time. Yes. Yeah, so, so for the new bees and for all the new people, uh, private label do need time. It required effort and a hustle as well. So it's it's it like it's hard decision to when it's like it's hard decision to make when you have a high paying job and you need to leave your job and you need to start with your business. But it do have a perk. It do have a perk. You can be your own boss. You can stay at home. You can work from anywhere. You became a digital nomad in short. Like you can travel anywhere. But this do require a whole lot of effort, uh, effort that you have to put every single day, probably 16 hours in your business. And then you achieve this kind of things that uh, all these things fantasize so many new people who want to start. Yeah. Oh, my God, they see a luxury life driving a Lambo, uh, <laughs> having a vacation in Bali or a Maldives or like having a Europe tour. But this do come with time. It do come with time and effort. 
persistent yeah. effort is necessary to achieve all this thing so uh, your brand has a very cool story as well apart from this your company has a very cool story you help people in scaling and you your key areas on like is on optimization how to do a proper optimize optimization how to position a product uh, through your listing content and how to put amazing branding when it's come to a private label so uh, so let's share something about uh, positioning a product or like how they can do a better listing optimization to get more sales and what uh, and what's the most important role of branding actually well i think the the key thing to understand is that buying is an emotional experience people connect with the products that they buy from so it's very important to pay attention to to not just copy what everyone else is doing you know you really want to even if i'm selling the same product as everyone else like if i'm selling this water bottle right there's not really anything special about it anyone could copy this anyone could source this right but i need to do a better job of explaining it to the customer and connecting with the benefits that it offers them so the key is understanding why people buy this product right and that starts off of amazon the biggest mistake i see people making is they just use amazon tools it's a huge mistake you have to understand the customer and why they want this product and so you have to go off of amazon first and discover okay what do people use these water bottles for what are their key pain points right or is it because you know this this one has a double walled um thing and a straw you know there's certain people that like it with the straw there's certain people that don't right there's there's i love this because it keeps my drink hot or cold um but understanding what pe why people use it and what they use it for and what they love about it and what they don't love about it you know really and that just doesn't come from product reviews um, yes, there's a lot of product reviews and you can get information from product reviews, but you should be looking at the larger market. Look at what's selling in retail because those are the brands that are trusted, right? So look at the bigger picture, the customer, what the customers like, and then position yourself. So if I'm writing a listing for this very plain water bottle that anyone could source, right? I'm going to do a better job of connecting with the customer's needs. So I know that they need their water to stay cold. They, they like drinking it cold all day, right? Um, they need it to stay cold. So instead of just showing a technical picture, an infographic of this thing, stainless steel, who cares? What I care about is that my drink is going to be perfect every time I take a sip right yes. that this water bottle is specially designed to keep your drink colder for longer right you need to connect with them and that's the big thing that you know it's not all about just keyword stuffing now keywords are a huge part of it and we can get into seo um, next but the first thing in our listing optimization masterclass, what we teach is the first thing is understand your customer understand what their problem is and how you uniquely meet their solution. Now, if you're selling something that isn't unique, you need to explain how you meet their, their need better than your competitors explain it. You need to create doubt in the, in the customer's mind when they look at your listing and your photos, that you need to create doubt in their mind that if they buy another water bottle, it's not gonna be the same, and that this one is special just for them, right? That's the thing. The number one question in the customer's mind is, is this for me? And so you really want to know who that customer is, who me is, and you want to be able to communicate that. So that's step one. That's the first thing that we do is when, in our listing optimization masterclass. The first thing that we do is we define what the customer's problems are, how we uniquely meet the solution, and then what their life looks like now that they have our product in their life, right? So that's what we do first. And then the second step is we draft the listing from that human perspective. We don't just take a big list of keywords and try to fit it in there. We draft the listing from a human perspective, writing the yeah, listing. So no keyword is nothing. 
Like, so this is probably one thing uh, that you made clear, right? Uh, so most of the Amazon listing content writer or like who do listing optimization, what they try to do, they try to stuff keyword in every sentence. Uh, probably sometimes I've seen sellers, those like instead of like giving attributes to its product, they just stuff keyword, 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 mm -hmm. 10 keywords in one single line. Oh my and then God. it doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense. So we do, sense, yeah. we do add keywords, but we do it after we write the listing. So we write the listing first from that human perspective, knowing the customer. And then we go back through the listing. And my goal, this is the thing, you guys, my goal is to put two, max three keyword phrases, not individual keywords. The way search engine optimi optimization works is through phrases. Individual keywords throughout the listing are not going to rank you organically. If you wanna be on page one, you have to know what is that search phrase that you want to be on page one for, and you have to be the most relevant result for that keyword. And you do that by researching the keywords that make that um, that main keyword, that main keyword phrase relevant. And it's not about just stuffing individual keywords. So what I noticed, I've literally fixed hundreds of listings from that were written by professional agencies. <laughs> and I've put in, I've put those listings on page one. And what I, what I notice, I use a special tool. Uh, and what I notice is on the listings that were written by these professional agencies, um, they use a bunch of individual keywords. They don't use the important keyword phrases throughout the listing that will make them the most organic for page one. And each of those keyword phrases that's related to the main phrase represents thousands of searches that you either are or are not showing up for. And if you're just taking individual keywords and smattering them throughout your listing, you're not going to be the most relevant result. So I, I completely relate to it. I completely relate to it. So we have one question from Arsalan and he says, if we are not brand registered and we don't have access to A plus content, then how we can make our listing stand out in the crowd? Well, Arsalan, that is an awesome question. I love that you asked it because everybody starts somewhere. You know, not everyone's going to be brand registered in the beginning. So I have to tell you something. I do a lot of listing reviews and one of the biggest mistakes I see is that people will actually make their A plus content stand out and they will not do that with their seven photos that are included at the top of the listing. So from a customer shopping perspective, the customer clicks on, if I'm on mobile, right? I click on the listing and I'm gonna go through those photos that are at the top of your listing before I even scroll down and look at your A plus content. So how do you beat the people that have A plus content? you just do a better job in your photos because people are looking at those first anyway. And so what I see brands doing, even big brands, I've seen them do this. They put all their effort into their A plus content and their photos up top suck. <laughs> and then, you know, it's like, what is this? And then, you know, the customer's moving on. The thing is you can optimize the listing as much as you want as far as keywords and everything. But if your photos are bad, the customer's not going to read the listing anyway. The customer goes through the photos first, and if you don't answer their questions, if you don't meet their needs in those photos, then they're gonna move on to your competitors, and they're not even gonna give your listing a chance. But if they go through your photos and they're like, ooh, okay, I get it. I get this product. I think I wanna know more. Then they'll actually scan your listing just to you know answer those last few questions that they have before they add to cart. But a lot of times, if you do a really good job, they won't even look at your A plus content before they add to cart because it's way down at the bottom. So yes, as far as like making your brand look good, like presentation on the page, storefronts are great and A plus content is great, but you can totally rock it just by having amazing photos in that seven photos at the top of the page. Okay, so one thing uh, that I want to ask here is like uh, how you come up with this much creative idea that you need to be different from all the other competitors. Everyone has same white background picture on top, right? The hero image should be on white background. Then how you can add value and make yourself different because 
the first image that Amazon will show to every customer that would be a white hero image, like how you make difference here. Because uh, we all know, so what I normally do, I do have my 3D image as my main image. Like on a hero image, I always get a 3D image. So I never use any uh, photographed image. I always get a 3D rendering done, modeling, and then I keep it as a first image. And for all other images, I do add 3D image. But what else uh, we can do like to make it different and more and more people can witness it? Like, okay, that's a different product. That's a different one. So how? I don't know if I want to give you this hack, Atif, but um, but I will because I'm a nice girl. <laughs> <laughs> and because I know that it takes skill to actually pull this off properly. So I will give you guys my hack. My hack is retail packaging. Customers trust products that are in retail. They don't trust Amazon anymore as far because there's so much saturation on Amazon and Amazon has been brought you know, in so many news articles and everything for all these knockoffs and fake reviews and everything else. So in my program, we teach you how to create retail ready packaging, right? So that you put that in your main photo right next to that product, you have retail ready packaging on your plain old water bottle. People go, oh, did I see that at Walmart when I was shopping? Oh wait, yeah, I think I saw that at Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, sweet. Okay, this is a good one. This is a trusted one. That's the key. The key is retail ready packaging because they're going to think that it's already in retail. They're going to take you seriously as a major brand. And if you can put that in your main photo, you also get text. You can call out the benefits and everything like that. And you now have positioned yourself above everybody else on the page. So, uh, so the thing which I get from here is like uh, for your main image, uh, you should add a product with a packaging, like whatever your outside packaging is, should you include it? Or like if you can give a little uh, more insight on what a retail packaging is, retail ready packaging is, a little more insight because you're a nice girl. <laughs> so, you know, that's the key is understanding what retail ready packaging is, right? And that's why, you know, not everybody has, like there was a lot, there's a huge group in Australia, like a big group of Amazon sellers, right? And their differentiation was always their packaging. Like I have a, a lot of them uh, that I've consulted with, right? But they would spend a lot of money on gift boxes because they thought Americans really liked gift boxes. Actually, we feel guilty about gift boxes because we just end up throwing them away. <laughs> and we <laughs> we have to wrap them anyway, you know, or put them in a bag or something. So we just feel really bad when we get a product that has a really expensive gift box. Um, so, <laughs> but for some reason, because of all like the unboxing YouTube videos, they were, they were spending all this extra money on a gift box thinking they were gonna get more money for their product. So it's not like a gift box. It's like if you go to the store and, you know, when you're selling your products in retail, you have like less time than even on Amazon to get them to recognize your product, right? Because you're like walking down the, the store aisle and there's all these different colorful boxes and everything, right? And you're just like, hoping that your product stands up out enough for them to pick it up off the shelf and look at it and go, oh yeah, I need this and put it in their cart and not back on the shelf, right? So retail ready packaging is all about, and the other thing recently that Amazon's been doing, you guys know, been running into the 5665 error if you're not brand registered. Uh, yes, and this 5665 error is real pain for every Amazon <laughs> yes. Someone so, that brand is, yeah. So that's why we prepare our folks. We make sure that they have retail ready packaging, manufacturer's barcode on it, all the features and benefits, the title, the ingredients, whatever you know is required, the company name, the location. We have all of that on there. Like it looks super professional and no matter what you're getting approved from, from day one. So I can't really explain what retail ready packaging means. What I can tell you is that you could you could look up unboxings of major brands on YouTube since you guys are in Pakistan and you're not in America. That's another hack that I'm going to give you. But um, but for the most part, when you go to the store, like a big store and you see products on the shelf, that's what retail ready packaging looks like. Yeah, so I got it. I got it. Let's hope we, so we have 
uh, our relatives in US. Most of us have a relative in US, family living in US. We can ask them, go to Walmart or other stores and make some videos of a product packaging <laughs> and they can share there with you us. Go. <laughs> Or you can just go. You can just go on like websites like Walmart.com, Home Depot.com, Lowe's.com, major Maybe retailers in the US, yeah. Target.com, and their packaging is in their photos. Again, it's a mindset thing, and it gets the customer to trust your product because they just assume like, oh, this is a good brand. I like this. <laughs> Amazing. So we have from uh, one question from Johnson, and he says. Uh, how to get out the analysis paralysis when looking for the right product to sell on Amazon? <laughs> so would you guys be surprised if I told you that I don't use product research software to find products? Uh, 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 so I don't use Helium 10. I don't I, use Helium 10. I don't use, I don't use any product research software to find products to sell. You know really? why? Bradley is going to like he he's going to med on you, right? Why? Well, I, mean, I love you. Hey, I I said I don't use it to find products. I use it later on for data analysis, for competitor analysis, but I don't use it to find products to sell. So, so the, your head the, find or research a mastermind, like a top product, a golden product, I would say. How you do it? I mean, you're a nice girl. You have well, you're not going to find it on Helium 10 or any <laughs> other, know. or Exxon Guru or AMZ Scout or any. I've got access to all of them. I love all of these brands. They're awesome. They're great. I'm not knocking product research software. I'm just saying that you're not going to find a unicorn there because all you're going to find is existing products. You're not going to find what people are looking for and what people are buying outside, right? So I always start by studying the customer. This is called market research. It's literally been done by buyers for tens of hundreds of years, right? It's, it's not new. People have been trading goods and services since the caveman days. <laughs> so you find your buyer, right? Grant Cardone, one of the you know, most famous real estate guys out there, he says this. Find your buyer. That is step one. Who has your money? <laughs> Go find your buyer. Yeah, I, I, I know from this guy. He always say this. Yeah, I follow him. He always say yeah. this. Find so, your buyer who has your money, right? Yeah, find your buyer who has your money. So the thing is, you, you should study the customer. So many people come to me when it comes time to launch their product. And I tell them, okay, let's talk about launch. We're going to set up your Amazon PPC and we're going to set up three forms of external traffic. And they go, what? You want me to set up external traffic? And I'm like, yeah, what, where does, where do your customers hang out? Can you, can you tell me three forms of places where we could build the bottom of funnel and middle of funnel ads for you? And they have no idea because they've never studied the customer. They've only studied the product. Yes, they've studied bad reviews, but nobody's searching for toiletry bag with bad with good zipper. Nobody's searching for that. You have to find what people want. And you only find what they want by studying the customers and what they're DIYing, studying customers and what they're already, um, what they're already doing, their pain points, study why they buy sat that saturated product. So if I go into water bottles and I'm looking for a really great water bottle to launch, right? I'm going to go and look for that customer and go, okay, who is the customer that buys these kind of water bottles? Are they, there's a niche that you can sell to. There is a niche inside of this that is a brilliant niche that you can sell to. And it doesn't mean that you always have to invent a product. Maybe your water bottle is going to be specifically for people who bike, people who cycle, you know, maybe your water bottle is going to be specifically for people who lift weights or specifically for people who go to the gym. Maybe yours is for people who go to the office, you know, and take their coffee from home to the office in their car, everything else. Like, who are you selling to? Know them and connect with them. And then, you know, like, let's say that I'm selling to cat people because I am the cat lady. OK, I'm the cat lady. I love cats. Um, my brand is all about cats. So the thing is, um, if I'm selling to cat people and I want to sell a water bottle to cat people, I know cat people. I know they're crazy about their breeds of cats. 
So I specifically know that there's subreddits on Reddit where people just worship their tuxedo cats. And I have a tuxedo cat, right? So I could literally come up with a whole brand of water bottle. It's easy to put a design on this, right? Print on demand, baby, right? <laughs> easy yeah. to put a design on it, right? And I can literally come up with a whole, do you know I was looking for a mouse pad that had a cat on it the other day and they're all like generic, they look like crap. So nobody is selling, you have to know who you're selling to and sell to them. And then it doesn't matter what your product is because you know your customer and you have a way to connect. And then I also know where the cat people hang out. <laughs> I know to run an ad in the subreddit of tuxedo cats on Reddit if I'm going to do a tuxedo, you know, kitchen products or something, right? Um, but anyway, the, the point is know your buyer. Know who it is that you're selling to. And then any product could meet their needs. And you don't have to necessarily invent something, sometimes it's as simple as changing a design. So if you're stuck in analysis paralysis, stop and go find your buyer. Stop and go look at who buys this and why do they buy it? And why will they buy from you and not your competitors? And I promise you, you will find opportunities. So every time somebody comes to me on a con consultation and we go over their product idea, that's the first thing we do. We go find their buyer. We're like, who's buying this? And Nine times out of 10, we find keyword opportunities based on that of things that people, their buyers specifically looking for. And then we'll pull up that keyword on the page on Amazon. Nobody's selling it. A bunch of products show up, but yeah. none of those products meet that buyer's need. So that's how you get ahead is study the customer. Yeah. 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 So the heck is to study a customer instead of running behind all this product research tool. They do help in some cases, but uh, if yeah. you want to have something amazing, like amazing at home, so mm -hmm. you just have to find things in other way around. So just to understand your buyers, what they want. Yeah. I agree with this. So Arsalan has another one. So if we are a new seller and we just rank our product to the top by advertising method, but a competition started a price war, then how we can tackle in this condition? Well, unfortunately, you have fallen victim to the methods that don't work anymore. So you are selling a product where you're competing on price. Whenever you're selling a product where you're competing on price, you're losing the battle. There's not a lot you can do short of like changing out your photos and trying to communicate how your product is better. But either way, you're stuck in paid land where you're going to have to pay to get to the top of the page and stay at the top of the page. You're gonna have to try to do a lot of giveaways to get reviews. I avoid these products like the plague, right? Like I would not even bother with these products. And that's the big problem with finding products on product research software. 3000 new sellers on Amazon every day, all of you using the same search filters, you're finding the same products by the time you launch. And most of you don't have enough margin. Most people yeah. have a three X margin. And they don't even have enough money left over for advertising. So they're not making any money. They're just spending it all on giveaways. So unfortunately, I mean, it's a great question, but there's no smart answer except for to sell it off of Amazon. Get off of Amazon and sell it somewhere else where it's not so saturated. I, I completely agree with this. Every single day there are 3,000 new sellers appearing on Amazon and they are using same tools, same research methodologies because you just change filter, right? Probably the filter that you are picking in like, in any of the research product research tool someone else is thinking the same way because there are like hundred and thousand of people using uh, all the products that tool every single day and probably me and someone else has the same mindset and we can put the same uh, filters and we get the same results so instead of running after all this tool start looking for a new and better alternative ways try to understand what customer wants and by this way you can find the product that suits you as well and it can help you in making a brand as well, right? Yeah. Thinking from a customer perspective, try to help their problems, try to help their problems with a product that no one else offered. So uh, a day before yesterday, Ashley was with me, uh, the hidden rule expert, right? You know her, Ashley, the hidden rule expert. So she was discussing a product idea and one of her customer, she just come up with uh, like her daughter has eczema and like there is no other thing in the world that helps a kid with an eczema. She develop a clothing kind of thing. And this is probably the one and only product in the world, right? No one has this uh, eczema is skin for kid, right? Because yeah. kids used to scratch their hands 
a lot. So she found a pro product from a problem, right? So yeah. this is what everyone has to do. Start looking at the problems or the solution for customer and you will come up with something great for sure. So we have Maria uh, and Maria says, kindly can, can, do share the art of studying the customer's mind, Emmy. Yeah, so Maria, that's awesome. Um, the art of studying the customer's mind is getting into their problems. So the thing is, all of us, when we are in day-to-day -day life, you are the customer. Think about it. When you, let's say you got a new puppy dog, right? You got a new puppy dog and this puppy dog is chewing everything. Your shoes, the wall, <laughs> you know, you're trying to train this dog. What are you going to do? If you just got a new puppy dog and you're not just going to go to Amazon and look for products, right? You're going to hit up Google and you're going to be like, how do I get this pup? How do I train this puppy dog? <laughs> how do I... Uh, how do I train him? How do I get him to stop peeing on the floor? <laughs> how do I, you know, get him to stop chewing up my shoes? And you're going to study all these things. You're going to look at veterinarian blogs. You're going to look at TV shows. You're going to look at, you know, whatever, you know, influencers, things that they recommend. You're, you're going to try to figure it out. And that's the same thing that every customer does. That's the same thing that the journey that they go through, looking for a good water bottle for their workout. You know, they either look at what their friends are using, which, you know, it's the kind of the same as an influencer, right? Like a micro, micro influencer, or they go with a brand that they trust. They go peruse the store and find a brand that they trust, or they're looking for, oh man, I want one that really keeps my drink cold. Like what's the best one for that, right? Like the word best is searched higher than, I, it's like huge. It's a huge search term in association with products. Um, I was watching a presentation in Traffic and Conversion Summit, and it was just like huge for words like the best. Um, so that's what the customer's doing. How do you study their mind? You literally just go down the same journey. So like when I was saying like, you know, find out why, like put in the search bar on Google, on Pinterest, on Amazon, put in the search bar. If you're trying to sell a dog toy and you're wondering, okay, why do customers buy these and what do they care about? literally put in dog toys for and look at the suggestions. You're going to see the top suggestions. The search engine has done it for you. They're telling you exactly what people are looking for. So dog toys for aggressive chewers, for tough dog toys, dog toys indestructible, and then put in the word with. And don't just do this on Amazon, do it on YouTube, do it on Pinterest, do it on Reddit. Like go around the internet and study what people buy and why they buy it. and then. Why, why do people buy dog toys for aggressive chewers? Okay, well, you got to look at why do dogs chew? So now start studying why dogs chew. And you'll see all these recommendations, right? And you're going to start understanding the customer and what journey they're going on through before they buy a dog toy for an aggressive chewer, right? So that's the thing is you want to get to the start of that customer journey when they have a problem, they have a new dog or they have you know, a new house, a new apartment, you know, what kinds of things are they searching for? You can look at answerthepublic.com. That tells you all the questions that people ask. You can look at Uber suggest. You can look at um, keywords everywhere is one of my favorite um, Google Chrome extensions. Um, but I, even when I write Amazon listings, I study keywords on the greater, the greater internet before I optimize a listing because 60% of Amazon's traffic comes from search. Let me repeat that. 60% of Amazon's traffic comes from search, not on Amazon, from yeah. search. So if you're not in search, you're only on Amazon, you're, you're just getting this little piece of the pie. So yeah. it's just, yes. So it's, it's so, so important. Big, yeah. So because still uh, we have seen and we have witnessed, like if uh, still I want to buy something from Amazon, <coughs> I first go on Google, I search there, right? Probably best headphones or top headphone or top 10 headphone brands and top 10 headphone models. And then in like when, when I go to blogs and I start reading and then I figured out there's a link for Amazon and then click and it, it took me to Amazon. Because still you are 100% right, it's still 60% traffic comes from the web and it reaches in and it leads you to Amazon. 
because external traffic do have a huge potential people who only sell on amazon they are on a verge because if they don't try pin interest if they don't try facebook google ads if they don't do seo or pin interest or instagram or any other cross platform media like social media channels they they are losing a huge chunk probably they are like if i am rank on google my results are showing on top if i if my ads are performing good on facebook pin interest and on instagram then there is a high likely chances that it can have a great conversion on my amazon listing as well google my, ads google i just spoke in the helium 10 elite mastermind yeah. group about google ads because they are one of my favorite hacks for ranking amazon products so you know if we think about people are looking in search i mean it's and they're so cheap it's so cheap to run google ads to amazon products because amazon is a huge trusted domain so but a lot of people are running them like to their own website they're you're they're just like all over the place so just know where your customer is know where they're hanging out connect with them over their pain points understand who they are and what they want and give it to them find your buyer and you know before you know it once you know the buyer side you'll go on amazon and that keyword search will look completely different because once you study like dog toys for aggressive chewers right like you're studying why dogs chew and like all these things right uh which made me funny miss our miss owan said we have a puppy dog and he chew all my shoes mm -hmm. and furniture <laughs> but you know once you understand that mindset and then you go back on dog toys for aggressive chewers on amazon right you're yeah. going to see it from a whole new light because you're going to go, oh, my God, that's not solving their problem. That's not solving their problem. That's not solving their problem. None of these products work. Right. So once you understand that niche buyer that you're trying to go after. So even think about the different types of, of dogs that you could target. Right. Like dog owners, like you're not like if you're selling dog harnesses, for example, one of the um, one of the core well, one formulas. One of the very popular, yeah. One of the yeah. very popular product. This is something which has been discussed everywhere. Dog mm -hmm. harness, and I am not sure what happened to this uh, specific niche after so many people jumped in. Oh yeah. my god! Dog but you could still everything. win. You could still win because if you are selling a dog harness to a specific niche audience, if I have a pit bull, or if I have a pug, or if I have a Bichon Frise, and you are selling, your keyword is dog harness for Pitbull, which one am I gonna buy? I'm gonna buy uh, the one you. that's specifically for Pitbulls. So, you know, you have to, you really have to think about it. Don't just think of it as a product, think of it as a customer and connecting with them. Perfect, uh, got it. So, uh, Johnson has another one. How do you help newbies entrepreneurs to unfold their inborn potential? Interesting. That's right? such a good question. You know, the biggest key is mindset. Most people are afraid of both failure and success. Mm -hmm. That is the key is understanding that your fear is very real because inherently all of us want to succeed, right? But also realizing that you have to believe in yourself and you have to change your mindset. The human brain is the most powerful thing in the world, right? And it believes what you tell it. So if you tell yourself, I can't do that. Oh my gosh, I'm going to fail. You're going to fail. <laughs> if you tell your brain, I will have this, I will do this. You will be able to face your fears and move forward. It doesn't mean that fear doesn't exist, but it's so, so important to really, really look fear in the eye and go, I am capable. I believe in me. I can do this. I know I can do this. And your brain is going to listen to whatever you tell it. So that's the thing. It's not about anyone could succeed, but it's about you putting up walls in front of you and in letting your fear lead the way. You can't let your fear lead the way. You have to realize you're, you are wonderfully and amazingly made. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really incredible what humans can achieve if they just let go of their fear and know that they are capable. Oh, like exactly. So you need to be persistent. You need to be consistent. Like you need to have this consistency from day one that you can do it. You are the one who can do it. No one else will, will help you. You have to achieve this. Like if you have this mindset from day one, like, okay, 
how many things are coming in my way probably i'm going to like face whole lot of problem turn of difficulties but still i will be the one who will get things done and i will be the one who will finish this this is probably the one thing that every entrepreneur needs in order to succeed right and you i think face- the other thing the other thing that i would love to just put out there is the second reason that a lot of people don't make it is because they don't have a plan. If you don't have a plan and you can't visualize your goals and your plan, you need to have a clearly written down plan. Like your goals need to be written down. In my mastermind group, we do monthly, weekly, we do quarterly and monthly, yearly and weekly planning. And at the end of the month, every month, we sit down and we go, okay, what are our three objectives? What are the tasks that need to go underneath that? What are we going to accomplish this month? And so I was in the military for a long time and I was a war planner. And that was my job, take really big things and break them down into small executable goals. And so I carry that over into my business. And that is why I'm a productivity beast, because I don't care what other people are doing. I'm not worried about, you know, a thief's success. I'm not worried about this person's success. I'm worried about my goals and achieving what I set out to do. So don't let everybody else's noise distract you. You set your goal and you know where you're going and you lay out the steps to get there. You don't have to understand everything along the path. You can learn that, right? But if you don't know where you're going, you don't even know where to begin and you're just spinning your wheels. So I want you to visualize and do it on a regular basis. Every week, think about the next week and what you want to accomplish. Every month, think about that month and what you want to accomplish. And when you start your business, think about the end. Start with the end in mind. What do I want to do? In three years, I want to have this. I want to exit. I want to do this, right? And then break that down into smaller plan. Okay, what do we need to do this year to make that happen? Lay out your top, you know, your priorities for this year. Then go into the first quarter and go, all right, what, you know, break that yearly plan, draw a circle, make a cross in it. You got four quarters, put your tasks in each quarter and know exactly what you're going off after to meet your yearly plan. Then take those quarterly tasks and put them into a monthly plan and go by the end of this month, I need to have this, this, and this done and just get after it. Don't let anybody stand in your way, right? Get after it. Because that's the big thing that people struggle with is either they have a technician mindset, meaning they just want to replace their job and they're not actually a business owner, or they don't have a plan to move forward. And that's like the biggest thing that the entrepreneurs in my group have gotten out of my program is they, and I didn't even know that they were going to get that out of my program, but they were just like, Amy, your planning and your productivity and your time management classes have been everything to me (laughs) because they don't, a lot of people don't have those skills, but if you have those skills to really set out your plan and keep planning and keep executing, you're just going to, you're going to become a productivity beast. Oh, oh my God. I just have to say on this one. So (laughs) it's opened up my mind as well, right? We have a ton of things to do every single day and we always run after things. Oh, this is probably one of the best advice for every business owner or someone who wants to start with business or any entrepreneur or anyone, anyone, anyone who wants to achieve anything in his life. Come up with plan, a strong plan for sure. Just come up with a plan. Write it down somewhere. Write it down somewhere. Just give me a second. Yeah, you can. Okay, I probably saw I was getting caught. Write it down somewhere and like divide this a yearly plan into quarter and quarter to months and months to week then and here you get the success like boom this is amazing oh my god it it is a ton of knowledge that you have delivered today and uh before wrapping up this amazing session one thing that i want to ask you uh what is your uh advice or a feedback for all the women in our community who wants to start with their amazon journey or who wants to start with their freelancing or the service providing journey. So how uh, these amazing women who used to be at home or like at offices or different places, how they can achieve success down the line or how they can start with their journey for selling or for offering services, because you are a mom yourself, so you can guide them better, right? Well, (laughs) you know, it's so crazy because we often don't realize our own potential. And I know that the I'm actually <laughs> speaking at a Christian church in Pakistan this week. Um, well, next Amazing. week, upcoming, 
to mm -hmm. encourage the women there, right? Um, and I think this is like a big part of my heart because women, I just want to tell you women, like I want to like look you all in the eyes right now and tell you that you are incredibly made, right? Like you, women are incredible. I love working with women entrepreneurs. You know why? Because we women, when we put our mind to something, there is nothing that will stand in our way. There is nothing. And you are showing your children, you are showing your children how anything that they dream they can achieve. You're showing them so much strength. You're not leaving them out in the cold by following your dreams. The, it, and that starts with just believing in your own potential, right? Just taking one step and believing in yourself and knowing that when you set your mind to something, you can do it. And sometimes that takes somebody else giving you that permission. For me, I when I got into cybersecurity, there was no women Right. And I had finished my degree in cybersecurity, but I was super nervous about it. And I got this big job offer and I didn't think I could do it because my background was not in computers. Like my background was, you know, in stuff completely different. And I had to go to this really hard tech school and my whole job depended on it. And I went to this leader that I really respected. And he said, and I said, I just don't know. What if I can't do it? And he said, I'm pretty sure that Amy Weiss that I know can do anything she puts her mind to. And that man gave me permission to move forward and do whatever it is. And I didn't know that I would be here today. You know, if somebody would have told me that I was going to have all these different jobs in my life and I was going to do all these different things, I would have never believed them. But I, I am here talking to you today. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a plain old girl, you know, like there's, there's nothing really um, special about me that differentiates me from you. That's, there's nothing. You can totally do anything you put your mind to. So I, I would just encourage, and the other thing that women do better than guys, sorry, Atif, but women do this thing better than guys. We multitask. We yeah, can literally I, I multitask. I and <laughs> so I you are powerful that. and you can take care of your children. You can be a great wife and you can also follow your dreams. So I just want you guys to give yourselves permission you girls to give yourselves permission and know that you're absolutely capable of anything you put your mind to and don't be afraid to dream and go after it. And I love how the men in Pakistan, despite the, some of the cultural stuff that is very deeply ingrained. Um, I love how you guys are supporting your women. I love that. Keep doing that. So guys, we need you to keep supporting them and keep believing in them because my husband is amazing. And he tells me all the time, like he's my biggest fan and my biggest supporter. So I'm challenging the men as well. Be her biggest fan, be her biggest supporter, because she <laughs> will become something incredible if you just let her put her mind to something and get after it. Amazing. Amazing. I, I completely agree with it. Like uh, for two points, right? For everything that you have said, women are better when it's come to multitasking. No one gets beat them. <laughs> And like they are so hardworking, so hardworking, so hardworking. Oh my God, this is amazing. I've seen this. I've seen this. And I always, I always, and me and my community, we all, we are already working on this initiative to empower every single woman in Pakistan and to uh, give them this platform where they can uh, do something extraordinary for themselves. That's all we can do. We, we are here to help each and every individual in Pakistan, especially for women. So we have this strong initiative behind this. Women empowerment is something which is very important for us. So we have this multicultural uh, cultural work environment in our incubation centers across Pakistan. And we are, we are we being happy when we see this thing. Honestly, ask me like this is probably one of the best things that we people are doing right now. And, and thank you so much, Amy, for your great words. You are being such an Amazon seller, a, a business like a, someone who scale help businesses to scale, and someone who speaks amazing. When it's come to putting a motivational stuff, oh my God, you give me a goosebumps today. Uh, <laughs> there was a time I got a goosebumps before ending this conversation. I just want to say, uh, probably, would you like to share your one secret hack or tips or trick to the audience that can help their that that can help to scale their Amazon business? Just one trick. Things that you think, okay, probably this is one of the heck that's your favorite one. 
just give it a shot you're a nice girl emmy <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be our joke from now on well before i do that i just want to say that i'm seeing all the comments and i just i appreciate them so much you guys warm my heart and um and i'm glad that i could be here and and say some nice things to you guys today you all deserve it and and you know there's plenty of room for success for all of us and so i just i see all the comments and i just want to say that i just really appreciate it it's really nice um, okay. So my biggest hacks, let's see. Oh my gosh. Well, You're having, kind of having a plan, <laughs> having a plan would be number one, right? Like what I talked about, you know, having your plan and like getting into a schedule of planning your goals and like going after them, putting them on your schedule, that kind of stuff. Like that is going to pay dividends, right? Um, choosing the right products is so important. Having margin is so important. Um, but really having a plan is, is the most important. Um, also knowing your customer, somebody asked a question earlier about, you know, how do I send Pinterest traffic to my Amazon, um, listing, yeah. you know, the, the, the bottom line is that you, I see so many people like do Facebook ads and then they, they, they just spent a bunch of money and they didn't get anywhere with them. Right. So my biggest hack, this is the one that I give my, my group members build out the bottom of the funnel first. If you don't know what the funnel is, <laughs> study the sales funnel, understand the sales process. Sales is the most important skill that you can learn. Mark Cuban, one of America's yeah. most famous billionaires said that if he lost all of his money tomorrow, he would go get a job in sales. And he didn't know if he could make a billion back, but he'd at least be able to make a million. And so I want you guys to learn sales because that is the key thing that carries through everything that you do from your Amazon listing to your, you know, building out your bottom of funnel ads and all of that. So if you are putting a product on Amazon and you're trying to do a successful launch, you want your ads to be at the bottom of funnel because that's where people are buying. So if you know where your shoppers are at the bottom of that funnel, so Amazon PPC is one thing, right? But outside of Amazon, you need to study where your customers are hanging out. If you build out that bottom of funnel stuff and you drive some of that to tra traffic to Amazon, you're just going to rank like crazy and you're going to get in front of buyers that are where, you know, where your buyers are instead of just like running a bunch of Facebook ads and, uh, <laughs> and like, you know, not seeing anything from it. So that's my big tip is just build out the bottom of your funnel first then build out medium, uh, the middle of the funnel, then build out the top of the funnel and you'll be really successful. Oh my God. Thank you so much for the detailed explanation and sharing a great tip to all the people who wants to try this stuff when it's come to digital marketing. The one thing uh, for sure, I agree with the Mark Cuban thing, because if you know how funnel work and like if someone does not know how funnel work, go and read it. A sales funnel is one of the most important things to learn and to scale things. Thank you so much, Amy, for being here and having your valuable time with the audience. And thank you for sharing so much knowledge bombs. And like, it was a great word, like motivational words. This, uh, this has a great value in it. Thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day ahead. Thank you. Thank, and thank you. Thank you for all the audience, right? Thank you so much. Hope to have you soon with another <laughs> expert round of session for sure. And this is for sure. I'm going to call you on Clubhouse like, Emmy, uh, <laughs> you are a nice girl, Emmy. Well, it's great that I finally got to meet you because your Facebook yeah. profile picture looks nothing like It's completely like you. different, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's great to like know the face behind the mask. And you know, now when I see you on Clubhouse, I'll be like, what's up, Atif? All right. I know who you are now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my All God. Right. Thank you so much, Emmy. It was a great session. Thank you. Have a nice day. Right. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.